Hi everyone. Today we are going to study solving quadratic congruences. There are many type of quadratic congruences. Here we are going to study the simplest type of congruence x square is congruent to a mod of p where p is some prime integer. Before we begin, let's look at a very important theorem which helps us in solving such congruences. So what does the theorem state? It says the quadratic congruence x square is congruent to a mod of p where p is some prime integer and gcd of a and p is 1 has a solution if and only if a by p is equal to 1 that is the Legendre symbol value is 1. In other words, the solution of such a congruence exists if and only if A is a quadratic residue mod P. If such a congruence has one solution as X0, then the other solution will be P minus X0. So, if the solution of such a congruence exists, there will always be two solutions. Let's look at some examples. In the first example, we are asked to find the solution of x square is congruent to 9 mod of 13, if the solution exists. So we will first check whether solution exists or not. So we will find the Legendre symbol 9 by 13. We know that 9 is a whole square. It is of the form a square by p. So the value of the Legendre symbol is 1. The solution exists. You can see that the GCD of 9 and 13 is 1 and 9 is a whole square. Because 9 is a whole square, it is 3 square. So x square is congruent to 3 square mod 13. Hence one solution is 3 and the other solution will be 13 minus 3 which is equal to 10. So this congruence has two solutions, 3 and 10. If we ever have a doubt whether the solutions which we have found are correct or not, you can always put them in the congruence and see whether congruence is satisfied or not. So here, let's check. If we take x naught to be 3, 3 square is 9, 9 is congruent to 9 mod of 13. It is satisfied. Take 10 x0 is equal to 10. So 10 square is 100. 100 minus 9 is 91. 91 is divisible by 13. So this solution also satisfies the congruence. So in this example, we saw that our residue was a whole square. What happens when the residue is not a whole square? So it does come to our mind whether such a uh, you know, quadratic congruences have a solution or not or how do we find it? We wonder what happens. So, yes, we can find the solution. What we do is we start with the residue and we will go on adding the prime moduli till we get a whole square. The moment we get a whole square, we stop and the square root of that is one of the solutions. So what are we doing basically? We take our residue to that we are adding our prime moduli multiple of times till we get a whole square. We will just see in the coming examples. The whole thing will be clear. Let us see here. We are asked to find the solution of x square is congruent to 2 mod of 17 if it exists. We will first check the Legendre symbol 2 by 17. We see that it is 1, so the solution exists. Now, if the solution exists, we have to find it. We can see 2 is not a whole square. As 2 is not a whole square, we start with the residue 2. And we will add our modulus p to that. So 2 plus 17 gives us 19. 
19 is not a whole square. Also, 19 is not composite. So, what we do, we will add 17 to 19. This gives us 36 and 36 is a whole square. So, we will stop. One of the solution will be 6 and the other solution will be 17 minus 6 which is 11. Both 6 and 11, they satisfy the congruence. So here, let us just do it again. What are we doing? To 2 here, we have added 1 into 17 which gives us 19. In this, we have 2 plus 2 times 17 which gives us 13. 6 or it is 6 square. In the third example, we are asked to find the solution of x square is congruent to 6 mod of 23 if it exists. Now, first we check whether the solution exists. So 6 by 23 is the Legendre symbol, 6 by 23, which we have written as 2 by 23, 3 by 23. This is equal to 1. So the solution exists. We will now find the solution. So we start with 6. To 6 we will add 23. This gives us 29. 29 is not a whole square and 29 is not composite. So to 29 now we add 23 which is 52. 52 is composite so we will write 52 as 4 into 13. Now you notice 4 is a whole square. So write it as 2 square into 13 and keep this 2 square in safekeeping for the future. We will now handle 13. To 13 we will add a prime moduli which gives us 36. You see that that is a whole square. So from this step we got 2 square. One whole square is here. And from this step, we have 6 square. So we have 2 squares. 2 square and 6 squares. 6 square. Now, which means 2 into 6 is our solution, which is 12. So we take 2 into 6. One solution is 12. The other is 23 minus 12, which is 11. Both of them satisfy the congruence. Now, in these questions, we saw that our moduli was prime. What do we do when the modulus is not prime? In such a case, we first write our given congruence into a system of congruence. This example will clarify the whole process. So let us see this example says find the solution of the quadratic congruence x square is congruent to 49 mod of 15. 15 is not prime. So what we do we will factorize it. We see your m is 15 which is 3 into 5. So we write this congruence as x square is 49 mod 3 and x square is congruent to 49 mod of 5. So we have written this congruence as a system of congruences. Now, in order that the solution of such a congruence exists, both of the congruences should have a solution. So in the first one, we see 49 by 3. The Legendre symbol is nothing but 7 square by 3, which is 1. And in the second congruence, we have 49 by 5, which is 7 square by 5 which is also one. So both these congruences are solvable. Next what we do, we find initial solutions of both the congruences. So for the first congruence, 49 mod of 3, we can see that the first solution is 1. 1 minus 49 is minus 48, which is divisible by 3. So if one solution is 1, the other solution will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we have two solutions, 1 and 2. Coming to the next congruence of the system, x square is congruent to 49 mod 5. One solution we can see is 2. For if we take 
2, we get 4 minus 49, which is minus 45, and that's divisible by 5. So the other solution is 3. So the two solutions here are 2 and 3. Two solutions we get from this congruence. Two solutions we get from the second congruence. Now using these, we will write 4 congruences. Set of 4 congruences. How do we write that so that there is no repetition and there is no mistake? So what we do, we will write 1 and 2 in the same line, 1 and 2, and the moduli, which is 3, for this set of values. In the second row, we have taken the other two solutions, 2 and 3. So we write them as 2 and 3 and take the corresponding modulus, which is 5. Now, vertically and crosswise, that is how we go. So first we'll start with vertical. So we take 1. X is congruent to 1 mod of 3 because 1 belongs to this row, modulus is 3. So we write X is congruent to 1 mod of 3. Then the vertical points downward. So second one is X is congruent to 2 mod of 5. So we have got the first set of congruence. X is congruent to 1 mod 3. X is congruent to 2 mod of 5. Now we come to this. Crosswise, x is congruent to 1 mod of 3, x is congruent to 3 mod of 5. So, see x is congruent to 1 mod 3, x is congruent to 3 mod of 5. We will now take x is congruent to 2 mod of 3, arrow points here. So, x is congruent to 2 mod of 5. This helps us in writing the third set of congruence. And the last one is x is congruent to 2 mod of 3. Come down, x is congruent to 3 mod of 5. That is the last congruence. You can see that here all of them are distinct. There is no repetition. So this is a safe way of writing all the congruence. Order here does not matter whether you take this vertical, then you take this vertical and then come to crosswise. It is up to you. We will solve each set of congruence using Chinese remainder theorem. You can see we started with the first congruence. X is congruent to 1 mod 3 and X is congruent to 2 mod of 5. The initial value for this is 1. Initial value solution for second congruence is 2. We call them C1, C2. 1 is congruent to 1 mod 3. Here 2 is congruent to 2 mod 5. Now, N1 is nothing but 5 and N2 is 3. We find the inverses. N1 inverse is 2. You can see 5 into 2 is congruent to 1 mod of 3. So, 2 is the inverse. Here, the inverse of 3 is 2. 3 to the 6, it is congruent to 1 mod of 5. So, we have our values here. The solution becomes x is 1 into 5 into 2 plus 2 into 3 into 2 modulus of 3 into 5 which is 15. This gives us x is 7. So we have first solution which is 7. In the second set we have x is congruent to 1 mod of 3 and x is congruent to 3 mod of 5. C1 here is 1 the initial solution. C2 is 3, the initial solution for the second congruence. N1, N2 and N1 bar, N2 bar will remain the same because they don't change. Now, our second solution is 1 into 5 into 2 plus 3 into 3 into 2 modulus 15. We can see that this is congruent to 13. Same way, we solve the other two congruences and this gives us x is 2 and x is 8. So we have four solutions, 2, 7, 8 and 13, which we have seen there. So you have to remember one thing. When we wrote the congruences, we had a system of two congruences. So we get two solutions from the first congruence, 
and two solutions from the second congruence. Together, they give us four solutions. Thank you for watching.